Does anybody have a testimony they'd like to share this morning? You want to come behind? I'll let you come right back. While we were in, while you were in Sunday school this morning, and you don't know what I'm about to talk about, but it involves you, Pastor Kevin. While you were in Sunday school this morning, there was another significant police shooting in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. A number of police officers were killed, and a number of them are in the hospital. Um, I would like Kevin to pray because we're having this, this is a, a epidemic in our country. People don't understand, people in our metropolitan areas don't understand that police are not our enemies. But many people think they are. Police are not our enemies. Even when they arrest us, they're not our enemies. Um, Kevin, would you come and pray for um, our country in this respect, for the officers and their families? and uh, pray God's forgiveness for the bad things I said about people who shoot cops <laughs> when I was alone with my wife. <laughs> All right, let's pray together. Father, we thank you uh, just for Greg this morning being uh, uh, just where he brought in that news and understanding of the events that are going on in the world, Lord. In uh, Baton Rouge, Lord, we want to lift up those families uh, of the officers, Lord, the department, uh, the community at large, Father, that you would intervene and that you would be with them. Father, this event again that's happened just like it happened in Dallas just here a short time ago. Lord, there's, uh, there's upheaval uh, beginning in our country over many things. And like Greg said, Lord, you have given us the policemen. And Father, we thank you for their protection. We thank you for the things that they're doing, the hours that they work for us, and how I can go now, Lord, to bed every night and feel safe in our community. Father, we raise them up to you. We ask that you get a hold of our nation and our country, Lord, again, and that we would be a nation, we would be a group of people, Lord, that would follow you and do your will. And Father, I also want to lift up uh, Chevis this morning too, Elaine's uh, brother. Dear to her, and dear to us, Lord, because he's dear to her. Father, we ask that you be with him as he's in the hospital, as he gets ready to be released. And Lord, that you be with him, not only in a physical uh, aspect, but in a spiritual aspect, Lord. Speak to him in his heart, and through the circumstance that he's in, draw him to you, Lord. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Okay. I agree they're not. But in Salt Lake when they arrested me, it was pretty crooked. There are three guys, but they chose me. <laughs> you should rethink that. He and, and Josh was saying, I think he's been under some times probably on the other side where there had been some arrests or things and maybe they weren't like they should be. But as a whole, I, you know, just being in policing myself, the majority are good men and good women uh, serving our, you know, our country, our homes, our places that we are. And uh, yes, Josh. Yes. <clears throat> yep. Valid point. Bring in the balance to it, and that's all right to share your heart. And, and there is a balance. But we lift them up and we raise them up because those men have been put there. If they are doing things that are wrong, we can be assured that there's going to be accountability in their lives and pray for them. Yep, that's exactly right. Um, any other any other testimonies this morning, Carol? No, and the same same thing that Greg was saying. You know, we think about these places way back east that all of this is happening. But last Sunday, when we went home, they had an incident at the police department. They had it blocked off, the, the hill going down towards the Belfry Highway. We had no idea what was going on, but somebody 
had to strap to you know a gas mask on and everything. It turned out okay, but we're not exempt from any of this. You know, we're right. I mean, we think that we're okay, but we're not. And and I I I really think a great deal of our police departments. And I know, just like Josh said, there are some crooked ones, but the majority of them are trying to do their job, trying to take care of the people here, and trying just to, you know, sometimes I think they, they have a hard job. I would not want to go out every day and face the public because they have no idea what they're going to come up against. And I, and I do, I do respect all of them. And even if they do pull me over to the side of the road or something, what I'm doing, it's my fault. It's not theirs. So. Thank you, Carol. Any, any other testimonies anybody like to come and share? Brenda? I have a prayer request and a praise, huge praise. Um, prayer request first for a friend of mine that lives in Virginia that has been in a very unhappy marriage for several years and is really struggling with what to do, has two small children, and between them they have his, mine, and ours kind of thing. Um, and she's just really struggling. And her name is Kelly. So if you would lift her up in prayer, I would appreciate that. Um, and praise, I can't even begin to, there's not even, even a minute amount of sufficiency in the words God has given us to praise him. Um, there was a milestone hit Friday. I talked about it last week, but we are one year and two days sober. And that is a huge beginning. And I just say beginning because it's just, just a teensy weensy drop to com compared to the future of our sobriety it's I just I'm just so grateful and progress made huge progress made with these guys as mommy that last year at this time I felt was hopeless I felt it was done I, I just felt like in my heart I had trampled on her enough that she was finished and it's not so. And I give all the credit and all the glory to God because he is so awesome and he knows the love that I have for her and he knows the love she has for me and for Steve. And it's healing. I asked her, I promised myself last year that I, until I had a good amount of sobriety under my belt, one year at least, I wouldn't make any attempt to make amends with anybody because I wanted them to know that it was coming from a very real place that I wasn't just yeah 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 you're sorry you've said it before and I've heard it before and I wanted them to know that I'm coming from a place of real true heartfelt sorrow that I caused them hurt and I want them to know that I truly mean what I say I'm not just saying words I'm I'm being truthful and I sent her, she was first on my list. I sent her a text the other day and told her, Ash, you remember I sent you a letter about a year ago telling you that I wasn't going to make amends with anybody until I felt I was ready and I had enough sobriety under my belt. Well, Steve and I just celebrated our one year. Um, and you're first on my list. And I'd really like to get together with you and express how how sorry I am for the things that I've done and said, but I want to express it in person and give you the chance to express how you feel back to me. And she said, with good cheer, there was some laugh out louds in there, and she said, we can set something up very soon. And I was, that right there, that was enough for me. That was enough for me. But we're going to do it. We're going to get together. But just hearing her say yes, was that was enough for me to praise the Lord because here we are a year later.
And I sat here a year ago saying, in one year we're going to be here and it's going to be so much different. And here we are. Praise you, Jesus. Yep, amen. <clears throat> Giving the Lord glory for what's happened in their lives and the only him that could do it. Only him that could do it. Josh. Josh. I was saying about the alcohol, mm-hmm. and I'm sorry, sir. I that was about the cops, Josh. Cops. I know not. <laughs> I'm sorry for thinking it. I, okay, it sorry. I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we love your heart, Josh. Yep, go ahead. Brit. We are also finally <coughs> We are also finally, finally on the same day we are finally caught up and even a little ahead on our monthly bills. So now we can start whittling down on some of the outside the monthly bills. Mm-hmm. Praise you God. Amen. Love to hear a testimony like that when we Move in the way where the Lord wants us to be. He makes things happen in our life to bring glory to Him and honor. We thank the Lord. Uh, Anybody else have a testimony they'd like to share this morning? Elaine? Elaine's coming. I love Jesus Christ and I thank him for saving my soul and for loving me every day and helping me on the path that the Lord has for me. But Josh, I want to tell you, you don't have anything to be sorry for. Not one thing. Sometimes things happen to us that aren't right. And it's okay to say that. It doesn't mean that you think all police are bad. You have an incident that's truthful to you. So don't feel sorry for being able to speak out. That's what we have in our land is freedom of speech. And guess who fought for that? So don't, I don't want your heart to feel sad that you spoke out because you can always speak out. That's something about our church. It's, it's a family so you can absolutely say what's in your heart. You don't, it doesn't mean you're arguing. You're fine, okay? Just know that. And, but we are with our police officers. And my son, before he got right out of, out of the Marines, he became a deputy. And he patrolled for four years at night in our little county. And that opened my eyes to have someone close to you in a department that protects you you see things that you never knew about never understood so i i'm one of the ones that will always always appreciate our police force our firemen our first responders because they take care of us. Yep, there's bad apples. There's bad apples everywhere. But I wonder how many of the ones in Baton Rouge were bad apples. How many were hurt? We don't know. I'm just saying, there's innocent people out there getting hurt now for no reason except hatred. And I think Preacher Kevin can tell us real quick where hatred comes from because we've talked about it already this morning how he finds our our niche in our lives to undermine us to undermine our families to get into our lives to destroy us our families our communities our world our country and then our world so 
Thank you for bringing up that. I didn't realize that happened this morning. But we need to know and we need to be in prayer. And I agree with what you said. We need to pray for those bad apples. They're lost too. Absolutely. Thank you. Anybody else testimony this morning like to share? Brother Paul's coming. It's all right that you were late. <laughs> not, not so much um, testimony, but prayer request um, just for family members. Um, we need some miracles in my family, uh, just that hearts would be touched and lives would be changed uh, by Jesus. So I just pray that you'd play, pray for my family and um, that God would open up doors and and enter into hearts. Hope you uh, write down those prayer requests too and remember them. I'll try and get them all included on our Wednesday prayer thing too. Any other testimonies this morning I'd like to share? Well, we went long enough to get Brother Kurt back to lead our next song. If you weren't, I was going to bring Greg up this time. Just point blank, right? Bring him right up. <laughs> so, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> we'll go to our, our next hymn, Brother Kurt. <laughs>